Playing the music of Johann Sebastian Bach is a requirement for every single music school and music competition out there, specifically his unaccompanied works for solo instruments. And because it's so exposed, everything from technique to musical choices are out on full display. Now that being said, there are many ways to play Bach. So today we're gonna go through and review some of the most famous violinists playing Bach to compare how their interpretations have changed over time. But before we get into it, I wanted to share with you this app that I've been working on, which helps people to improve and have more fun while they practice. So if you're like me, where you feel like it's hard to focus on your own, but then easier when you're out there with others who are also working, then you should definitely check out Tonic. It can track your practicing, you can get feedback from other users, and join groups to discuss different topics. In fact, we're hosting a Bach practice challenge starting today, where if you join and just practice for 10 minutes, you can win prizes and merch. It's quick and easy to sign up, just follow the link in my description below, and best of all, it's completely free. Oh, and for those of you who are really shy, don't worry, you can listen to others practicing and receive inspiration. All right, so first up we have Yasha Heifetz. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this where I'm actually about to give my opinions on such a legend. All right, here we go. Okay, he's first of all, one of the most well-known violinists of our time. But he's also really well-known for playing things really fast. But it's interesting to see that, in fact, this is like the opposite. Comes in super strong in the beginning, where it's like a... Oh. And he's got that typical fast vibrato. So I think it's also interesting that there's like this old school versus new school kind of train of thought, where like actually the new way is the Baroque informed way, where people like have uh, studied the, you know, the type of instruments they had, the bow and kind of the tuning and no vibrato, that kind of stuff. And then like the old school is actually the romantic way of playing, uh, which is like what we just heard now. It's two different methods. Also slides as well, like right there. Two, two slides in a row. That's uh, very typical of the old school. It's totally not my type of playing. I would say that I'm like more of an in-between. I'm gonna take out another of his contemporaries, uh, Nathan Milstein. It's almost like his tuning is lower or something. Yeah. Also, I have to say I like this a lot better. I think awareness, there's more awareness of the pillars, like the da you know, that each chord is connected to the next chord. And that the in-between notes kind of travel towards the next pillar. With Heifetz, like going back to his, the first chord just like, it kind of just hung in the air and it wasn't really going anywhere. I'm not really quite sure what is happening then. And then, yeah, you can hear that like each of the little notes, he's kind of placing the importance, like an equal importance on each one as he did to that pillar, to the chord itself. I think that the interpretations that I'm more familiar with uh, state that like those notes in between are almost ornamentation towards those big pillars. I think that's the main difference. All right, so the next one we're gonna check out is uh, Rachel Podger. <laughs> I finally know who Rachel Podger is. Who's Rachel Podger? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Okay, yeah, so you can immediately tell that uh, this is a very different style of Bach from what we just heard. Yeah, so it's like more improvisatory. Like there's reactions happening. You can hear that each thing is a reaction to the previous thing. There's the chord. It's kind of like waterfalls into the next chord. The quicker notes are quicker and the longer notes are longer so that there's more of a contrast. And 
and it creates this effect that, well, it's more ornamentation. Even her using the music stand on stage is a her period style because um, it wasn't until Clara Schumann, much later, like that people started to memorize music on stage. So this is also really interesting. I mean, close back to back, the different kind of sounds, right? This is like romantic, the old school. <laughs> And then you got Baroque style. I think it's always worth it to practice the two different styles to know exactly what makes what style. And so that you can make your own informed decisions as well and your own musical choices. It's also the shape of that bow. You'll notice that the shape of modern bows, it's like this way, right? And her, the shape of those Baroque bows, these modern bows, they can like, when you put weight in, it sort of, it, it bends this way. So it helps you. But those, the, when it's shaped the other way, it actually, it's really hard. The bow hair becomes way tighter. The fact that she can like hold and sustain at the, um, without, you see how like, even when I'm playing, even though it sounds smooth, you can see that the bow actually like trembles a little bit. The Baroque bows don't have that. You literally have to use your own fingers and like your, from the, the wrist to the, to the elbow. It's much less forgiving on a Baroque bow. So I, I think that that's like really cool to see. All right, so uh, moving on, another modern day violinist, Hilary Hahn. Oh. This is definitely the old school approach. Let's continue listening. I want to listen to like a little bit of the middle part. Right there when she did that, like. There's like, there's just a real delicacy around. It. Even despite it being heavy sounding, it's really cool to see how like delicate she can make it. I think that's what creates this kind of magic in her playing. You also see like how little bow she uses, like. And yet the sound is so full. That's like a very iconic Hilary Hahn thing. Yeah, being able to do that. Like on, like she sounds like she's going from the frog. But it was like right here in the, at the tip. Yeah, that's really cool. I will say when you do add vibrato, it means that you can add more weight. The string itself can also, as we talked about earlier, it widens that, I guess, that road, that tightrope, so that you can also put more weight on it. There's something about her playing that's just like the cosmic universe, you know, kind of like thing, like we're so small in it. And like, there's this kind of like sadness as well, kind of like an existential thing. That B flat that she just played. It's just so it's like deep within from the guts. Nice. Yeah. Yo, even that last note. Wow, yeah. You hear that and it's just like, 
Does it even matter which type of style a player chooses to, to use? I think that really begs that question, right? Is it more important to recreate informed sort of period style of what Bach was? Or is it more important to present just what you feel like is the strongest emotional language of, of using Bach, you know, using the notes of Bach, but then putting it into your own interpretation. A lot of people who are learning often have this question, like, should I just do what I want? Well, yes, but no. People like, you know, anyone that we heard have already made their informed decisions, especially if you're a modern day player. Like, people know the existence of Baroque style playing. And I think it's important to try every single method there is out there before you make your own informed decision. That's the answer to that question of, am I allowed to do what I want? Yes, you are allowed to do what you want when you know everything there is. So yeah, wow, I am definitely feeling super inspired by all of these and performances that we heard today. I'm gonna go practice my Bach now. Oh, remember, you can go practice your Bach too on the Bach Challenge on Tonic. Please let me know if there are any other videos that you'd like me to review. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.